our praise. Come on, God, it's been good to you. All for God's praise. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If God's been good to you, offer God some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can take your seats. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel God in the midst of us. I'm so glad to be here. So honored to be here. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't go anywhere without a song in my heart. Amen. Get myself together up here. Let me get this stuff out the way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give an honor to God who is the head of my life. He is my best friend, my father, my great and my mighty, my prince of peace, my Lord of all. I give honor to him on tonight for my life, my health, and my strength. Amen. For without him, I would not be. Without him, I don't think I would want to be. Yeah. I thank the Lord for this mighty, mighty gathering on tonight. Amen. I thank the Lord for this great angel on tonight. My brother, Pastor Alan Gray. I thank the Lord for his wife, Lady Monica Gray, my sister. I thank the Lord for my other brother, Pastor Terry Hill, all the way from Florida. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm trying because I feel a leaving in my spirit. I really, really do. I really, really do. I just give honor to God. I give honor to God for each of you. For new vision, y'all are just amazing. Y'all are just amen. Bless the Lord. I thank the Lord for you all. Ecclesia that travel with me. I love you all. Thank you kindly. Y'all are somebody amazing. Y'all see this growth tree right here? That's vision. Y'all come to Bible study on Wednesday night. We got something for you. See, you look at a picture and just be inspired of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank the Lord for this building that you are in. I thank the Lord for the ceilings and the floors. I thank the Lord for this pulpit. I thank him for the doors. I thank him for the windows. I thank him for the lights. Yes, I thank him for the pillars that hold the roof up. I thank God for the rafters. I thank God that your lights are on. I thank him that the heat is running. I thank God that last Sunday, when you said you gather here on this Sunday, the doors of the church have not closed, and this is me, a dwelling in a house of refuge. I just thank the Lord. You may not have everything that you need here, but surely you have everything that God intends to give to you at this moment and this time. And I guarantee you, if you trust him, it's more than enough. I'm excited. In my spirit on tonight, y'all ought to be grateful. Yes, 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 yes ma'am. Y'all ought to be grateful. Yes. yes. Statistics say at least 180 churches close their doors between one Sunday to the next. Right. And you were not counted amongst them. Yeah. I could dance all night right there. Your keys is still turning in the locks, elders and deacons. You ain't got to explain. Well, we ain't got nothing else to be thankful for tonight. We surely be happy. Well. All right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Y'all all right? All right. I can only be who I am. I'm giving you household disclaimers on tonight. Please don't your expect house. anything fancy and bougie. I'm not she. I just want to share that with you. I can only give to you what God has given to me the way that he has given it to, to me to give to you. Amen. Amen. I got a song on my heart, E. Y'all ready? Come on, let's do it. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all make it quick. Now listen, this is the law of the land. If you praise him, I'll give you my preach time for praise time. Now the longer you praise him, the shorter I gotta preach. Now I'm gonna be mad if you don't praise him, because that means I got to fill the time. But if you praise him, I can preach a little shorter and dance a little longer.
David rose up early in the morning. He left his sheep with the keeper and took and went as his father, Jesse, had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight, and he shouted for the battle. Skipping down to 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the men, fled from him and were so afraid. 26, and David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? People answered after him, This man, and so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Y'all listening? Yeah. And Eliab, his older brother, heard when he spoke to the men. Eliab was angry, his anger was kindled against David, and he said, what did you come down here for? Why have you left the sheep? Who did you leave them with in the wilderness? I know your pride. I know the naughtiness of your heart. For you are come down to see what you're going to get into in this battle. David said, what have I done now? Always doing something. What I do now, is there not cause for me to be here? He turned from him. And another spake, and after the same manner, and the people answered him again. Listen, y'all, listen. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Calm down, king, I got you. That servant will go fight with this Philistine. Going down to the 40th verse. And he took his staff in his hand. Chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Y'all know the story. Put him in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. 45, then said David to the Philistine, Thou coming to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou has to buy this yeah. day right here, right now, right now, yeah. will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I'm going to smite you. I'm going to kill you. And take thy head from thee, and I will yeah. give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God yeah. in Israel. Yeah. 50th verse. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, took his sword. My God. This boy is something. Took his sword, drew it out the sheep thereof and slew him, cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, when they saw their champion was dead, when they saw their champion was dead, they fled. 55th verse. When Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this? Abner said, as thy soul liveth, king, I don't even know. The king said, go inquire, ask somebody whose stripling this is. David returns from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him, brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Saul said, whose Son are you, young man? David answered and said, I am the son of thy servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. The word of the Lord is blessed. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you bless this, the reading of your word. Ask that you hear the prayer and the petition of my heart. God, you be glorified in you the midst glorified. tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have no dominion here. All no. power and all glory belongs to God. May you be noosed in the traps that you set for God's people on tonight. May you fall into the same ditches. May you be trapped in the same snares. For the King of glory shall prevail and with his people on tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. May the earth be given over to the word that will be ministered on tonight. I decree this ground yeah. ready and the hearts of your people right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Y'all take your seats. Thank you for standing so long. I just had to skip around. I want you to get the full essence and the understanding of where it is and where I'm going on tonight. I won't be before you long. I honestly promise you that. I want you to look at your neighbor though and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's about time for an oil change. Look at the neighbor on the other side and say, neighbor, it's time for an oil change. Well, the kingdom of God is suffering violence. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're suffering violence, being threatened 
and ostracized and exploited and seemingly put out to pasture. Everybody, everywhere, and for all intents and purposes, they believe that the day of the church has passed. My God. They believe that there's no power within our doorsteps. They believe that our altars are broken down. They believe that our God has forsaken us. They're not even looking to us anymore. They don't take us seriously. The word of the Lord is not magnified in the earth anymore. When we try to stand up and speak of his power and speak of his glory, they see us as high and lifted up. They declare that we are the puffed up ones of 1 Corinthians 4 and all we're doing is talking trash and we're talking big. That We're not the big people that God is looking for in the earth. But I decree to you tonight, it is my full intention by the time I take my seat for you to have full understanding that I declare to you the day of the church is not over. She is not yet in her latter glory, but she has not failed. She has not given up the ghost, and she is still ready and ready and poised with the power of the kingdom of God. I'm excited about her day. Preach, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I'm excited. I love a good comeback. I like when they count you down and out. I like when they bet on me because I'm the uh, underdog. Yeah. If we ain't seeing no place else, surely we found it in the depths of the story that I read for you on tonight. We grew up on David and Goliath, but David and Goliath have come to mean something even greater to me in my adult life. Right. When I start to pick up apart 1 Samuel 17, I see something significant happening here, particularly when we begin to talk about the dynamics of this battle. I see a king that time is just about up. Uh -huh. I see a king that has lost his authority. I see a king that God is not gracing any longer. I see a king that though he may look like the king, he does no longer have the power of the king. You see, something particular takes place with this head king Saul. The prophet rips his mantle in two. When he rips his mantle in two, it is a direct demonstration in the realm of the spirit that his level of authority has and he no longer has the right to rule. Jesus. Here comes little runny boy, Come on. David. David is out doing what he has come to love. He is simply tending the sheep. Yeah. He is pastoring, if you will. He has no desire to be anybody's overseer. He's not looking to become anybody's bishop. All he wants to do is pastor his sheep. Well, he is trying to be the best pastor that he could be. He feeds the sheep. He tends to where they eat. He makes sure that the grass is growing and that there's always food available to them. He makes sure that nobody is wandering. He makes sure that they are getting along, that they are doing as they're supposed to do. He has no desire. He's just happy come on. being a pastor. They told me it was Pastor Gray's birthday. Well. So I can speak directly to the front row, Come on. and y'all can catch it and let it minister to your hearts. Yeah. David ain't want to be nothing else. Come on. David was fine out there doing what he do, meddling around with the sheep, getting it in and having a ball doing it. Right. He was stinking. He ain't had to wash up, <laughs> handsome as he wanted to be, because the sheep loved him. Know why? Because he was feeding them. Yeah, yeah. 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 I hear you. The sheep didn't care what he looked like. I hear you. They just wanted to eat. That's they it. didn't care what David had. They just wanted meals. They just wanted direction. They didn't want the glitz and the glamour. They just wanted somebody to love them and them love them back. Yeah. yeah. Here comes his father interrupting the rudiments of David's day. He comes and he tells his son, son now, I need you to come from out that yard. And I need you to go and feed the warriors. David, because he's obedient to the voice of his father, doesn't question Jesse at all. Gets himself ready because he has a, a, such a respect and a regard for his father that he gets his stuff together, he carries the bag, and he does exactly what Jesse says. The Bible doesn't say David be an off pastors. The Bible doesn't say that he made pit stops. No. The Bible doesn't say he went to see his friends. The Bible doesn't say he stopped for lunch. No, the Bible that. says he took the bag and he went to go do exactly what his father told him to do. 
Talk. Talk. He had no other assignment None. but to discharge the duties of his father. Yeah, yeah. David gets to battle. He sees something happening in the battlefield that he understood that his father had no idea was going on. Right. See, his father was back home.
he has. Because his level of oil made him scared enough to hide in the cave. Yeah. Come on. Y'all want to talk about the great right. prophet Elijah. Come on, talk. But I'm, I'm telling y'all, yeah. I'm talking this generation that, that Elijah was still scared. He was still and Elisha scared. knew her. And I'm going to live after my father. I'm going to need more for my journey than he ever needed for his. Yes. Yeah. So he asked, I need double of what you have. I need double of it. David goes to battle, kills Goliath, cuts off his head with Goliath's sword, takes it back to Saul. Here's where everything goes down. Saul says, Abner, whose father does this boy belong to? Who is this little boy's father? Whose house is he from? Abner says, I don't know who his father is. David comes. He says, boy, Who's your daddy? He said, I am from the branch of that man, your servant, Jesse. Yeah. Well, why, Pastor Harris, is that significant? Well, I go back to the earlier in the text. I told y'all David didn't want to come out that field. I told y'all David was happy tending the sheep. Oh. The only thing that made David leave where he was was the voice of his father. Y'all, I'm telling y'all now, Yeah. I hear you. Amen. My God. 
How do I know? Well, David, he got oil before he got entitled. Yeah. He got oil yeah. and had to go back and go back to work. That's right. But the oil, the exchange had already taken place. He was already dripping. He already had it. It was already on him. And I'm going to take it one step further. He got it from the hand of a prophet. I'm telling y'all this. If the prophets don't start decreeing the thing, it's not going to be in the earth. Kings would not even make declarations in their kingdom without consulting the prophets. We want to know what's going on with America. We don't have prophets in the kingdom. Only the prophets were able to rebuke the king. And they took it. Only the prophets was able to redirect the voice and the, the mouth of the lawmakers. But everybody want change, color changes. Come on. I, I hear you. They don't want all changes. <laughs> they want color changes. They want there. color changes. You don't like it when you They like that red, don't they, do I heard you. They like that red. Like that red. Yo, like, like, that red. like that red. Like that red and they even get black right. They need to get black right. Change your oil. 
everybody sick. Thank you. 